Let me just adjust that. Hello, friends. Welcome to Chickenlandia and welcome to Bok Talk, your 100% backyard chickens. Your, oh, gosh. Can I do that again? <laughs> your 100% friendly backyard chickens show. Thank you so much for being here with me today. I am going to try to get through this show like I don't have a wicked headache <laughs> because I do. I've got a terrible headache, but here I am because the show must go on. Today we are going to talk about caring for senior chickens and I have a lot of experience with this. Uh, most of you that have been following me for a while, you know that a lot of my chickens are old. A lot of them are like itty bitty, tiny, super granny little chickens, <laughs> and they lay like one egg a month. So I am going to be talking about that. I do have a listener question that I will be answering today. And if you would like to submit a question to possibly be answered on Bok Talk, you can go to my website, welcome to chickenlandia.com, and go to the contact section. And there's a little drop down menu, and you choose ask a chicken question. And I know I get lots and lots of question questions, lots of questions. Um, I cannot answer them all. I try to look at all of them, but please understand, I just I get so inundated. And if, if I spent time answering every question that came, that's all I would do. <laughs> so unfortunately, I can't do that. But your question might get picked for Bok Talk, and then you will be chicken famous. Um, so I have two announcements today because I got to pay those chicken bills, okay? <laughs> the first is, as always, I want to let you know that this podcast brought to you by my favorite chicken, which is my favorite online shop for all my chicken things. They've got feed, uh, like scratch and pick feed, which you guys know is my favorite. They've got supplies. They've got super fun and funny chicken things that you guys are going to love. It's myfavoritechicken.com and tell them that I sent you. My second announcement is a reminder that I do have a chicken course that is going to help you be super confident in your chicken keeping and help you level up. And we all want to do that. We want to level up that chicken keeping. It is called Backyard Chickens 101, a chicken course for everyone. And it's a perfect gift for that chicken person that you love, or you can buy it for yourself. <laughs> because you you can treat yourself. Uh, you can find it at course.welcometochickenlandia.com or you can just go to my website and it's welcometochickenlandia.com and you'll see there's a tab that says course. Okay, I want to say hi to some of the people in the chat. We've got a few people here today. Oh, 13 Moons Over Mayhem. My trusty moderator is here Oh, we've got another moderator here, Homestead in the Highlands. Thank you guys for being here. Uh, Carissa is here. Thank you so much for being here. Topaz Chicken, Wendy Kalis. I hope I'm pronouncing your last name right. Teresa Oaks. Hello, uh, hello from snowy West Virginia. Oh, is it is it snowing there? I'm so glad we're done with the snow up here for now. <laughs> Judy Zims, just a mere homesteader, is here. Thank you for being here. Nancy Omachi, thank you for being here. Eddie Abernathy, hey. And Susie Fluzzi, always great to see you, Susie. All right, guys. Um, so I'm going to get into a little bit of story time, and it has to do with a little, old, a little old chicken I have. Uh, her name is Double Chicken, and my. <laughs> My eight-year-old named her when he was four. Her name's Double Chicken. I don't, we don't have triple chicken and we don't have single chicken. We just have double chicken. <laughs> um, so she's a little black Sarama of mine and we don't really know how old she is. She is a rescue from our local humane society. I got her a few years ago. They called me and they were like, hey, we've got a ton of Saramas in. And if you guys don't know what Saramas are, they are the smallest chicken. 
So, uh, and so far, they, uh, as far as I know, I think there's another breed coming out of Puerto Rico that is like really tiny. But um, for right now, people say that the Sarama is the smallest breed of chicken. Um, and I think, where are they from? Are they from Malaysia? Are they from, no, where are they from? Oh, I can't remember. They're from, they're from Asia, but um, I can't remember what part. So, um, Anyway, they had a ton of Saramas, so we went to go get some, of course, because I can't say I can't say no <laughs> to that. And we got double chicken, and we got another little gray Sarama that I still have. Um, she's really beautiful. Her name is Beast, also named by my son. <laughs> and then we got, and we also got Kiki, and you'll see Kiki in a lot of my like you'll see her in my podcast art. You see her all over my site. Um, she did pass away last year. I have not talked about it because it's really hard for me to talk about. Um, but it, if you've ever seen my chicken tattoo, I have a little tattoo of her on my arm because I really loved her uh, and I continue to love her. Um, so these little chickens, they were part of, a, as far as I know, they were part of a breeding program. And I'm not completely sure what kind of life double chicken had before she came to me, but I'm fairly certain that she lived in a wire cage. Um, I don't know how long she lived like that. So I don't really know how old she is. Um, and where her, I'm pretty sure where her owners live, they weren't allowed to have chickens. And so in a wire cage and I, you know, I know that there are breeding programs where, where, where people keep their chickens in cages and, you know, as long as they have enough room, I'm okay with that. It's like any chicken not in a factory farm, I'm okay with. Um, to have a, a breeding program in a neighborhood where you're not supposed to be there, you know, so they have chickens there. And then there's like so many chickens that got surrendered for whatever reason. I just... I try really hard to judge and just to educate. I think that's the most important thing is, is to educate people and not judge them because they had a choice. They didn't have to surrender them to the humane society. They could have done something else. So I am, I'm happy that I had the opportunity to get them and give them a better life. So, uh, during the last cold snap, I had noticed that double chicken really started to slow down. And she didn't look like she was just, I, I don't know. She just really kind of looked like she was struggling. There wasn't anything that I could really tell. She had a little bit of a, of, um, some buildup in her nose, which I cleared out. Um, but she was, it just looked like she really wasn't handling the super cold nights. And so I was like, okay, I need to bring her in. I got to turn the page. Oops. What? So I, I did bring her in, gave her just some like TLC. I basically did, um, a protocol that I call the rest method. And I'm going to put a link to that in the description and in the show notes. But all it is, is just, you know, you just get any sick chicken or struggling chicken, you give them a little extra TLC, you bring them inside so they don't have to like work on trying to be trying to warm up, give them a really good high protein, uh, nu nutritionally dense treat, uh, like scrambled eggs is the one that I always go go for. Um, and just keep an eye on them, make sure that they have a chance to rest and recover from whatever is going on. And sometimes it's, that's all they need. Luckily this time, double chicken stayed inside for, <laughs> well, she was in my garage in like a, a separate area that had a radiant uh, brooder in it that she could get under if she wanted to warm up. And she stayed in there for, it was like seven days because the, we just had really, really cold temperatures here. Very unusual for where I live. Um, but she had to stay in that whole time. And then, you know, I gave her just some immune boosting things. And, and by the end of the time, now she's back out with the flock pecking and scratching and, and doing her thing. So I see, I'm hoping that I have more years with her. Like I said, I don't know how old she is. She might be 
like really old. I have no idea. She does look pretty like, you know, they start to just not look as good when they get older. Um, so, and I don't know how, what kind of a rough life she had before she came to me, which can also age chickens. So I realize a lot of people cannot afford, um, to keep their chickens or they just don't want to keep them past the time when they are laying. Now, of course I never expected double chicken to be like this fantastic layer because she's a Sarama breed. Um, but you know, sometimes people have an egg business or they can't afford to feed chickens that aren't actually producing something for their family. And I absolutely, I mean, I really understand that. I don't have any judgment towards that what, whatsoever. Um, but I do try to tell people that, you know, don't forget that your, your senior chickens, they do provide fertilizer for their whole life. They're just little poop machines. That's, <laughs> that's what they are. They're poop machines. Um, and that poop is wonderful fertilizer for, for your garden. So, and they also give us, you know, hours of enjoyment and joy and love. So there's that, that we can remember. Um, so I just wanted to let you guys know that double chicken is out there having a good life and she is welcome in Chickenlandia for as long as her little wings can stay. So, <laughs> so that's my chicken story today. Thank you very much for listening to it. Okay. I want to get to the question that was submitted to me through my website. Welcome to chickenlandia.com. It is from a listener. Their name is Casey and Casey says, I am from Buena Vista, Colorado. I love your YouTube channel. It's so informative and fun to watch. Thank you very much. I was wondering if you could do a Bok talk or a video about senior or geriatric chickens. Some tips about care and issues that may arrive would be good. I have a rescued bantam named Peach who is eight years old. That's pretty old. That's pretty old for a chicken. She still lays the occasional egg and keeps all the other ladies in line. <laughs> like, right? It's always a bantam. <laughs> or like the, the smaller they are, the, the scrappier they are. We love her so much and would love to know how to keep her healthy and happy in her later years. Sincerely, Casey. So Casey, thank you very much for your question. Um, so basically, as chickens age, just like people, they kind of lose their resilience over time. They may slow down. If they had ha have had a good life with all the things that are really important for chickens, they ha have not had a lot of stress in their life. They have, you know, grown up in a clean environment. They've got good nutrition. They've got plenty of space. They get lots of exercise, all that stuff. And you don't have to, even if they're not free ranging, that doesn't mean they don't have enough space. Like they could be living in an enclosed run. And in fact, my chickens live in an enclosed run and they have plenty of space. Um, but if they have all those things and they should do well into old age, like we know that people that have generally have less of a rougher life, like they do well as they get older. Um, and so all of that benefit should carry through and hopefully they won't like have a really long time where they're not doing very well as older chickens. Um, but definitely you need to be mindful of their behavior and their condition as they, as they get older. In my experience, especially with layer breeds, they've just been bred to lay so many eggs that usually with them, and this is not so much with bantams because they're not bred in the same way. But I find that you really start to have to look out for reproductive problems in older chickens and you really want to make sure that they're getting the right nutrition, that they're getting enough calcium in their diet to continue to healthily lay eggs because like that is like that process, you know, I, I have this saying like when, when chickens are babies, it's all about their digestive health. Like that's what you're concentrating on. And then once they reach laying age, then it's all about their reproductive health. And it doesn't mean that you're not going to pay attention to their, to, you know, to their overall health, certainly to their digestive health, but really their reproductive health, you've got to keep an extra eye on that, especially with these layer breeds that are just, you know, they're just bred to lay and lay and lay and not necessarily to have a super long life. 
So obviously if you have an older chicken and you think they might be struggling with some kind of reproductive thing, um, always your best course of action would be to consult with a licensed veterinarian. I have to say that because it's true. Um, but I also know that that's not an option for a lot of people. So I want to say that as well. Um, but if you, if you see a chicken that is struggling and certainly if they're older, you're keeping an extra eye on them, bring them inside and do the rest method on them. Like, like I said, I'm going to post that in the description and in the show notes, give them a little extra TLC. Um, you know, it's basically just a protocol that you can follow to, give a chicken a little bit of a break and hopefully recover from whatever is going on. And sometimes that's all it takes. Um, sometimes they just need like a peace and quiet and a little bit of extra like warmth to lay an egg. I had a chicken. She was tiny. Her name was bubble butt. <laughs> Cause when I got her, her butt was completely bare. I guess she was like broody and I don't know how many, like she was a modern game bantam and she was itty bitty and like skinny with a little tiny butt. It's like, how many eggs are you going to hatch out? <laughs> Maybe one little tiny egg. Um, but she got really old. I think she was 11 when she passed away and she got to where I would have to bring her in like once a month for a while for so that she could lay her egg. Like she just couldn't lay her egg outside anymore. So I would have to bring her in and she would go into my bathroom and in the morning there'd be an egg. Um, and I could tell, you know, she was, she would just be like puffed up and really like not knowing what to do and not knowing where to go. And I can't imagine being like a senior person and still ovulating. <laughs> It's supposed to be over now. Uh, <laughs> so that's what she's dealing with. And like her last year of life, she laid two eggs that spring. And she did have to come inside for those to lay those eggs. And then, uh, you know, she really, really slowed down. And then eventually she died. So, um, you know, it's just those are just the kind of things that you that you got to do. You got to keep an extra eye on them, especially in the winter. Um, even cold hardy chickens, if they're super old, uh, they just might not have the bodily resources to keep themselves warm enough in the winter, even if they're with their big flock or whatever. Um, so be prepared to possibly have to bring them inside or you might offer safe supplemental heat. And I always get, I always get in trouble for saying this, but there are some, usually chickens do not need supplemental heat, but there are some situations where they might. And one of them is if you have really old chickens that just can't regulate their body temperature as well. So there are panel heaters. They're just like a rate. It's like a radiant panel. They do not heat the entire coop. They need to be close to the chicken and your, your chicken needs to be able to get close to it in order to warm up. But they're made, they just don't, don't get super hot and they're made to put into a chicken coop and to not present that level of fire risk that a heat lamp would present in your chicken coop because those are a fire, fire hazard. <laughs> So, um, or you can do what I do. Like I, I mean, I do have some supplemental heat in my coop this year, but it didn't work out very well. Um, because I just have so many old and weird chickens with no feathers and <laughs> they're all rescues. They're all misfits. It's like the Island of misfit chickens out there. But, um, in the, in our garage, I have like a big Guinea pig cage and it's got a, um, brooder panel in it that I can raise up if I have a big chicken in there and they can get under it if they need to warm up. But that is like my area that's always set up because I have old chickens and if, and it's always good to have kind of an area like that ready in case you have a sick chicken, even if they're young, but I've got that in the garage. So I'm prepared for, you know, if I have chickens that I need to bring inside. And when I had, when we had, it was like, three, the temperature was three overnight and the wind chill was negative zero. Um, I did have a lot of chickens in there. Cause I have like, like I said, I have all these old chickens I have Saramas and 
frizzly weird things that <laughs> you know it's like what like I said what planet are you from in the last video so nutrition wise I would just continue to offer them a really balanced diet now in my teachings I have something that I call the chickenlandia food, chicken food pyramid <laughs> And basically, it's like a food pyramid, like the human food pyramid, but better because the human food pyramid is not good. <laughs> it's like, don't follow it. You'll end up sick. But uh, <laughs> the chicken food pyramid, it's um, it's a really simple guide because I really like to keep things simple. I think chicken keeping should stay very simple. It is not hard. It is not complicated. Um so basically at the bottom, there's like three tiers and at the bottom it says you layer feed. And I do want to say like, there are lots of different ways to feed chickens and they are all valid as long as they're humane. Okay. So there are some people that only feed their chickens kitchen scraps and that is okay. Um, I really just want to include that in the valid and, you know, as a valid way to feed chickens. Um, but most of you I know are feeding layer feed. And honestly, the way that the layer breeds have been bred to lay so much, they have really high nutritional needs. So if you want your chickens to live as long as possible and you have them and th that's really what you want, maybe they're your pets, then you you will want to consider getting them an appropriate feed for their stage, which in most case would be layer feed. So that's the main tier on the bottom. And then in the second tier, because I do believe chickens should have some fresh foods, that's very important. Um, you will have healthy kitchen scraps, like mostly green vegetables, maybe some low sugar fruits. If you're sprouting grains for them, you can put that in that category. Um, so that will help. It, honestly, it helps with like feed costs and it's also really health, healthy for them because processed feed, when it, when it is processed, usually it, ha it has to undergo high heat and during that process, it loses some of its nutrients and then that nutrients needs to be added back in. So it makes sense that you want your chickens to have some fresh nutrients, just like us. If we were eating like processed food all the time, that wouldn't be, wouldn't be great for us. So chicken feed is kind of this double-ended sword. It's like, well, they need it. And also we don't want that to be their only source of feed because they need, they need other sources of nutrients. Okay. And then, so at the very top, you have, um, that the top tier is treats. So, you know, grubs, mealworms, scratch will go in there, uh, healthy proteins from your kitchen, like scrambled eggs. Um, and then there is like, uh, I used to, I used to have a sponsor called little farmer. I'm not, I, I I'm not, um, associated with them anymore, but they're a great company and they have like a senior chicken treat. <laughs> it's, it's a, just, it's a really healthy treat for them. But I thought that was cute that they had a, a chicken treat that is just for senior chickens. <laughs> Um, so, uh, if you follow that, like, like you have noticed, I do not do measurements. I do not tell you, you need to give them such and such, only such and such amount a day. Just be balanced about it. Just like we are with our own diets. Hopefully that's what we're doing. We're being balanced. Um, but obviously no matter what you do, no chicken will live forever. Um, and we, especially if we are keeping chickens until their later years, we must have a plan for the end of their life. Um, and of course, if a chicken is really suffering, uh, you, you might have her put, put down. You might, if you're not able to do that, which is okay. If you're not able to do that yourself, that's okay. Um, you get, can ask a vet to do it, or you can ask a friend that is experienced to do it, but you want to kind of line that up so that you're not in a situation at the very last minute where you have a chicken that's really suffering and you're like, oh my gosh, what do I do? Okay. Um, alternatively, you might decide, and there are people that do this and this is okay too. You might decide to let them pass naturally. Um, 
And if they're not suffering so, you know, a lot, then that's okay. There are a few natural remedies. You guys know I love homeopathics. I have been practicing homeopathy for over 20 years. We, our family has a licensed homeopath that we work with, and she helps me. She helps the kids. She helps my husband. She helps our chickens. Like I, I totally, I were like, you know, I'll text her and be like, I need help. <laughs> and uh, the ducks and the dogs, everybody. Okay. Um, but even if you don't do that, uh, you know, you can, there's books out there that are great. And I am just, I know it's not everybody's cup of tea. Um, a lot of people will say, oh, you know, that's pseudoscience or whatever. Well, I've been using it a long time and it works for me. So I, if something really works for me, I'm going to share it with you guys. Okay. Um, so ho homeopathy is great for the end of life. And then also flower essences, which is also another kind, it's kind of like homeopathy. Um, and some people, some people recognize it as kind of under that ho homeopathic umbrella, but, but not everybody. Um, but these are two modalities that work on an energetic level. Um, and I have seen them work, uh, with my own eyes. And there have been instances where I was just like shocked at how well they worked. Um, oh, sorry. I got distracted. <laughs> I thought that something came in. So the flower ens essence, there's two that I would recommend for end of life. One of them is called Angel's Trumpet. And you will need to go online and search like Flower Essence, Angel's Trumpet. But it's re that's an end of life flower essence. And it really helps them to have, you know, kind of just surrender to the process of dying. Because a lot of times there's like resistance for that process. And I would just take a couple drops and rub it in their back a few times a day. If they're eating or drinking, you can put a couple drops in their food. It's you, you're, you know, you don't want to give them a whole bunch of it. Cause a lot of times they will have, you know, might, might have, might be alcohol based. You could try and find one that is not alcohol based. Um, they have them for animals. Sometimes they will have them, um, glycerin based. Um, but if it is alcohol based, you just want to do like one drop in like a lot of water or a lot of feed. Um, and, but it's just easier, especially if, I mean, if they're, if they're that far gone and in the process of dying, I would put a couple drops on their back several times a day. Um, Bach rescue remedy is a really popular flower remedy. And that is just to aid in like general anxiety. You can also rub that into their back, a couple of drops of it um, periodically through the process and get yourself some too, because it's hard when you're losing a friend like that. Um, and then the homeopathic that I'm, I, I will use many different homeopathics because I have a homeopath that I work with. But the most popular homeopathic that is used for the process to, to, to create ease in dying is arsenicum album. And you would want to get it in the 30C potency. And it's just for chickens that they seem to be really resisting the process. Um, maybe there's some fear involved. And I am going to put a link in the description and in the show notes for how to dose homeopathics um, for chickens. And um, you can find that, you can find that there. So the main thing I want everybody to know is that whatever happens, um, I, you just should just know that that chicken was so lucky to have you and to have lived the kind of experience they had with you because most chickens in the world do not live like that. And they don't live into their old age. That's just not, not most chickens experience. So for you to be able to do that to them, I mean, they were lucky. So just know that. And Casey, thank you so much for your questions. I am going to open up the chat right now for questions. So if you have a question that you want to ask, please post it in all caps so that I can see it. <laughs> yes, I might not see it if you don't. Um, and I will try to get to all the questions. I usually don't, but I'm going to try. Um, if I don't make sure to just, um, you know, you can submit your question 
through my website and hopefully I will answer it. And I'm going to get a drink. Mm. Homestead in the Highlands. I'm sorry. She said I had a chicken put to sleep today. Was it the one we were talking about? We were talking about she had a rooster that was not doing all that well. I'm sorry to hear that. Eddie Abernathy says, sometimes I have to wrap my run in tarps to block the wind and rain. Oh my gosh. Like we had snow. I, I, I was like, is this Antarctica? <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, I knew it wasn't, but it was like, it was just like the snow like going up and into the windows, into the coop windows. And I was like, oh my gosh, like what? Um, C Matt, Matt, C Matt yell. Is, it, <laughs> is that your username? I can't tell. Uh, what is your opinion on Graham on the grandpa chicken feeder? So I, I think that's, it's great if you're like free feeding. So basically what they're talking about is it's like this chicken feeder that I, th I think I'm right about this. I think this is what it is the chickens go up to it and they step on it. And when they step on it, it opens and then they eat out of it. And so they learn to like go up to it and step on it. Cause there is nothing a chicken won't do for food. <laughs> they suddenly become really smart when it comes to getting food. Uh, their bird brains just like expand. Um, so the great thing about this type of feeder is that it keeps out rodents. So that is off, uh, you know, obviously very handy. Now, if you have teeny tiny bantams, I don't think this would be a good feeder for you. I'm pretty certain that the chickens have to be a certain weight in order to open the, the feeder because it's their weight that opens the feeder. So since I have these itty bitty, itty bitty chickens, I can't do it. I can't have the grandpa feeder and I don't free feed. I ferment the feed like as for right now, at least I'm fermenting feed. So I feed my chickens once a day, but if you're free feeding and you have, you know, uh, standard breeds, I think it would be great. Just make sure that they're learning how to use it. Make sure that they're all eating and none of them are getting confused about how to use it. Oh, Homestead in the Highlands said, yes, it was. Um, oh, it wasn't inflammation in his face. It was something solid. You know, um, I'm, I can't believe that Philippe is still alive because he had like this big, solid mass in his nair. And somehow the vet got it out and he almost died, but he's out there. They say the mean ones always live. And so I'm so sorry. I'm sure he was a sweetheart. That I'm so sorry you lost him. Thana Skyzer asks, all of my hens keep bullying the smallest hen. What should I do? So the first thing I want, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that's happening. Uh, that's very frustrating. Um, the first thing I want you to do is make sure that your chickens have enough space, that they're getting the right nutrition. I do have a video um, called like how to reform a bully hen or something like that. And um, I will put that in the description and in the show notes for you. What I would really try to do is observe them and see who's kind of leading the pack. Uh, Cause you will notice if you watch them for long enough, usually it's like one chicken that's kind of like causing this, this issue. And then the other chickens are following not, that's not always the case, but usually it is. So if you can watch them for long enough to see what chicken is the real perpetrator, then you can put that chicken. Um, if you have a coop that's big enough, you can get a, a smaller enclosure for the coop and put that chicken in the coop within in that enclosure within the coop. And, you know, she won't be able to like go up and roost with the other chickens. She's kind of separated from them. And usually that will kind of like take her down a notch a little bit. And I know it sounds, it, it, you know, it sounds rough, but it, you know, this is what we do if we're having this kind of imbalance in the, in the flock, it's kind of up to us to bring the balance back. 
So, um, and, oh, there are flower essences for that. And I cannot remember what they are right now. I'm so sorry. If I remember a flower essence that you can use, I will put that in the description and show notes for you. Um, and if, if that's not working, like I would do that for a few days, keep them separate, but within the flock for a few days, if that doesn't work, I would separate them completely, put them in a completely different area, um, by themselves so that, and I would, I would try and keep them out there for a while. You might, you know, maybe a couple weeks and then bring them back and you will have to like put them through the process of integrate integration to get back into their flock. And hopefully that will, that will kind of take them down a notch a little bit and they won't have that behavior. But the main thing that you want to do is just make sure that they have everything that they need. Um, and it might be something where they're just getting stressed out and that's why they're displaying that behavior. The other thing that you can do is, you know, if it's really bad, I have seen, I, I, I have not seen, I've never had a chicken that I couldn't integrate into my flock. And it is important to remember that they have their flock instincts. And a lot of times it, it can look really rough to us, but that is their pecking order instinct. And that is actually how they live. That's how they, they operate as a flock. So, you know, sometimes it's hard to watch, but there will always be somebody at the bottom and there'll always be somebody at the top. So if they're not drawing blood, then it's not, it is probably not as bad as it seems, but if they are keeping each other from eating, like keeping each other from eating and drinking, then you need to increase the number of feed and watering stations you have just to make sure everybody's getting what they have, but watch that getting what they need, but, um, watch that video and hopefully you'll get some good ideas on what you can do. And then I have another podcast called something like help my chicken won't integrate or something. And that might be helpful to you too. Ooh. Trying to drink water, you know, it's like, especially with it, you know, I've got this headache right now. So Topaz chicken says, my chicken is trying to sleep through the day. What should I do? So when you say that she's trying to sleep through the day, is she in the nest box, nesting box all day? If that is the case, then she might be broody, which means that she wants to hatch out baby chicks and be a mama. Um, if she is just standing in one place, looking a little puffy, looking listless, not moving around. I mean, you want chickens, chickens are, should always be like spry. You know, they're always kind of like moving, <laughs> even when they're still, they're, they're kind of moving, you know? So if, if they're just standing still, that's not normal for a chicken. So it's possible that that chicken is sick and if that's the case, then, you know, your first course of action, of course, if you can contact a licensed veterinarian, um, if you can't do that, bring them inside, do the rest method on them. And I, like I said, I'm going to put that in the show notes and in the description and see if just a little TLC can get them, you know, out of whatever they're experiencing. Check them for mites and lice. Uh, feel very gently around their vent to see if there might be an egg stuck. Maybe they just need to come inside and, and relax and lay their egg. Um, if, if they can't lay the egg, then you might want to just look up. Um, Oh God, what is it? <laughs> I can't believe I can't remember the name. <sighs> you know, I have a headache right now. What, what, it, what is it called when a chicken can't lay an egg? How, how do I, how am I not remembering this? Um, egg bound, they might be egg bound. Um, and if that's the case, they need some special care. So, you know, look that up, make sure that that's not what they're experiencing. Um, and just, you know, hopefully it's something that will blow over if they aren't feeling well, if that's the reason why it seems like they are sleeping through the day. 
Uh, Elizabeth De La Cruz asked, what does a chicken senior treat contain? I don't know. I know it has meat worms, but I don't know what else it has in it. I just, I haven't worked with them in a while. And so, and I, I don't think I ever knew what the ingredients were for that. I'm sorry. But it was called, I think it's on Amazon. I think they sell it on Amazon. It was called like senior, uh, yeah, it's from a company called Little Farmer. And it's a senior chicken treat. Oh, look at that. Chickenlandia presidential advisor answered. <laughs> uh, dried mealworm, super bug, berry, pellet, dried chili peppers, and oregano. That's all good things for your chickens. Is it normal for uh, uh, C. Matt Yell asks, is it normal for 13 week pullets? to eat less than what it's expected of them in the winter. Um, it depends if they're, you know, in, in my observation, and especially if it's really cold, they might not eat as much. Um, if also the days are shorter, so they might not be, you know, they just don't have as much time during the day to eat. Um, so that might be happening. I wouldn't worry about it unless you really start to see them not looking well, if they are pecking and scratching and, and, and displaying proper happy chicken behavior, then I wouldn't worry about that too much. A and M H says we put our bully chicken in a dog crate inside the coop two hours and she got reformed. <laughs> yeah. She was like, I don't like this. I can't roost. I can't go show, you know, assert my my, um, what do you recall it? <laughs> I told you I have a headache. <laughs> what <laughs> authority? That's not the word I'm looking for, but whatever. Okay, guys, I'm gonna ask. Well, okay, hold on. Sorry, it's going really fast. So. Uh, Judy Zims, just a mere homesteader, asks, is six is six month old kind of young to be to want to be broody? I have two, Dottie and Blotty. <laughs> Dottie and Blotty, the other sisters aren't just laying regular. So um, I don't think that's not, I mean, I have had chickens that literally they were just like broody their whole life. And it's, you know, six months old, they laid 10 eggs and then they went broody, and that was like it. And then like they come out of it, lay 10 more eggs, broody again, come out of it, lay 10 more eggs, broody again, or whatever, however many eggs. And so, I mean, it really depends on the, on the breed and the type of chicken, but, uh, yeah, I, I don't think that's beyond, um, the realm of what is normal for a chicken. Okay, I am going to ask, answer one more chicken and one more chicken. <laughs> Do we have chickens asking questions here? <laughs> I'm telling you guys, I'm like, uh, and I have had a day, okay? I have had a day. I am so over this pandemic. I'm so over it, guys. I just want it to be over. And we were just like, you know, we had like exposure at school. So we're like home and we're, it's just like, I, and I feel like everybody, is <laughs> uh, editor cut this out. <laughs> Anyway, uh, one more question I am going to answer. M asks, what do you suggest to feed chickens and ducks together? I'm very worried about proper nutrition for each. I think, I really think if you have a good quality layer feed that you can feed them the layer feed. I mean, that that is what I do. And ducks are very resilient. Generally, they need a little bit more B vitamins than um, chickens. But, you know, the feed that I give my chickens is scratch and pick feed. And that is also appropriate for ducks. So depending on the kind of feed you have, you might want to call the company and say, you know, is this, will this be okay to feed my adult ducks as well? When ducks are babies, I really do try to give them a little extra B vitamins. Um, 
because they they need they need it. Um, I do not feed ducks medicated feed, and in fact, I don't feed chicks medicated feed, but definitely not ducks. Um, and what you can do is you can give them a little bit extra. You can give them egg yolk. You can give your little ducks egg yolk, uh, maybe like every other day, a little sprinkle of egg yolk for them to eat. Um, you can also give them nutritional yeast or a brewer's yeast, just a little sprinkle for them. And that should give them a little extra B vitamins. And there's also vitamins that you can get from the farm store that got good, good amount of B vitamins in, in them that you can give them. But when they're babies, they really need that. And it's a uh, niacin is really the, you know, the thing that you want to make sure that they're getting, um, so yeah, but I think you'll be fine. There are all flock feeds. And in that case, you would just need to be really mindful that your laying hens are getting what they need. And to me, I, I was, I think I was talking about this in the last um, episode. To me, the nutritional needs of laying hens is just so high. And you're a lot more likely to run into issues with laying hens than you would other like ducks or roosters. Some people worry about, sometimes people worry about giving roosters layer feed, but I think, you know, in the grand scheme of things, it's more important and, um, less risk to concentrate on the needs of your layer chickens because they, they do need like that certain amount of calcium in order to lay. So that's what I would do. That's what I would do. I would give them layer feed, but you can check with the company that you're that you're using and make sure it's appropriate for them. Okay, guys, sorry. I know I didn't get to all the questions, but you remember you can submit your question to be possibly featured on Bok Talk by going to my website, welcome to chickenlandia.com. Go to the contact section and click ask a chicken question. Um, I want to thank you guys so much for joining me today. Thank you to our moderators. We've got three moons over 13 moons over mayhem homestead in the highlands was here. And of course our Chickenlandia presidential advisor who also helped me produce this episode. Thank you so much to talking to crows for editing this episode of Bok talk and to double M ranch for their wonderful podcast art. If you enjoyed this podcast, remember to rate and review it, especially if you're if you're listening to this on Apple Podcasts, please rate and review it. That really helps me. And also remember, one thing, you are always welcome in Chickenlandia. Bye. Thanks guys.